I'm going to help you learn all your major scales, learn all the different keys, and understand the cycle of fourths or fifths in the most clear way possible. Meet me over at my whiteboard. Okay, now that we're at my whiteboard, I want to sh I'm going to show you how easy this is going to be to understand because everything will be, will be written in front of you. Every time someone shows you what a cycle of fifths is or fourths, it's a little confusing because it goes in a circle and there's not all the information there. Here, all the information will be here, okay? So, I've taken the liberty to start this off before I roll the camera and I've got some numbers up there, all that stuff. I'm going to explain what that is. That is going to be our formula for the major scale, okay? Because we're going to do all major scales. Let's do go with color blue. In order to create a, a major scale, you have to have the right spacing between the notes. Okay, R stands for root. So the first note of the scale, the root, the second, the third, the fourth, fifth, sixth, the seventh, and back to the root again. And it has to be this, okay? It has to be whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Just in case, for those of you that don't know what a whole step is or a half step, I'm going to quickly explain it, okay? On a guitar, if you are on the, this has to be the same string. If you move two frets in either direction from wherever fret you're on now, that's a whole step. So whole step, as far as guitar goes, is moving two frets. On piano, if you're going from one white key to another white key and it has a black key in between, that is a whole step. A half step is literally half of that, okay? So on guitar, if a, if a whole step is two frets, a half step is one fret. And it has to be the same string, remember. You just slide up either up or down one fret. That's a half step. On piano, a half step would be between one white key and to the very next black key in either direction. Okay, there are some um, notes that are inherently half steps, but we'll we'll come to that. Okay, so let's start off with C major scale. So here we go, here's our first half step. The first half step that inherently occurs in music, um, naturally speaking, using the notes of the, our music alphabet, is between E and F. And also there's a half step between B and C. So now you know what the half steps are, between E and F and B and C, okay? And what we're gonna do in this column is we're going to put in the number of sharps or flats, okay? That's very important. That's how we're going to keep track of everything. And most people do it in fifths, but let's start off going in fourths. And there's going to be a reason for this. So what do I mean by a fourth, okay? Well, what's the fourth note in the C major scale? F, right? Four. So we're gonna, that's gonna be our next key. And this is why we say we're moving in fourths, okay? We're gonna, you go a fourth up from C. Now we have to write out a F major scale. Um, if we just write out a C major scale starting from F, you're gonna quickly see that that's not gonna work. But let's keep going. So we know that F to G is a whole step. G to A is a whole step. And here we go. A to B is not a half step, right? We need a half step. In order to create a major scale, you have to follow this formula. Whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Okay? So what do we do? Well, we have to instead of raising this, because then that would widen the gap here, we have to lower the B, we have to bring the B closer to A. And that's why flats were invented, okay? So then, that's B flat. 
The next note would be C because we need a whole step. It wouldn't be C flat because the distance between B flat and C flat is a half step. We need a whole step, okay? We only moved this one note in between here. And I, may, I forgot to explain, that's why I've got them spaced out. So the, any note that's got a space in between, that's a whole step. Notes that are right beside each other, that's a half step. And the formula ref reflects that, okay? So let's keep going. We know that between C and D is a whole step. It's a whole step from D to E. And then we're back at our root note, F, okay? Which is another half step. We know that E and F is a half step already. And we forgot to write in um, how many flats or sharps we have, right? The key of C, there are zero sharps and flats. But when we get to the key of F, we've got one flat, so let's write that in. One flat. And if we keep moving in fourths, what's the fourth note of, B, of F? B flat, right? So that's going to be our next key. Key of B flat. B flat. C, we already know that that's a whole step, or a whole step between B flat and C, so we're good. D, that's a whole step. And then we come to here, we have a problem, because E would be over here, right? We need to make it closer to D to make it a half step. So it's gonna be E flat. Same thing we did with B flat. And then E flat to F is a whole step, because E natural to F natural is a half step. If we lowered one, we're creating a, a larger distance. G, A, B flat. Okay, let's count up the flats. How many flats we got? One, two, three? No, not three. We don't count the B flat twice, okay? We only count the B flat once. So we have two flats. And then fourth note of the next scale, E flat. Okay, E flat to F we already know is a whole step. So a whole step from F to G, we know that from doing our C major scale. And I might add, if you decide to write this out for yourself, it's a good idea to remember that you have to use the next letter in the music alphabet. D is always gonna follow an, a C. E always comes after D. Do you see what I mean? We don't have two Fs or two Gs or two As or anything like that. There's, since there's seven notes in the scale, there's seven letters. We keep recycling those seven letters over and over again. Um, so here we go, we got G. We know that G to A is a whole step, so we're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna bring A closer to G by flattening it. So here we go, A flat. Now, what would the next note be? If, you sit, if you're thinking it's B, it can't be B because if we lowered A to here, now we've got a half step plus another whole step. Nowhere in this scale do we have a half a whole step plus a half step. There are there is some scales that do that, but not this scale. Every scale has its own unique formula, okay? So that means that B flat is our next note, followed by C, D. E flat. And you guessed it, we have one, two, three flats. Okay? Again, we don't count the root twice. So we got zero flats, one flat, two flats, three flats. How many flats do you think the next key is going to have? Maybe it's a pretty good guess, but let's find out. Go to the fourth note of the scale A flat, B flat. C, D flat, we have to bring that D closer, right? 
because it's between C and D is a whole step. We need a half step. E flat. F. G. A flat. How many flats? One, two, three, four. If you guessed four before, you were correct. Whoops, that looks like a six. By the way, since I've got some extra space on the board, do you know how to write a flat, a proper flat? This is how you write a proper flat, okay? A proper flat does not look like that. That is not a flat. That's a lowercase b, okay? Think of it like this. You have this half of a heart shape, okay? My heart shape is a little wonky there, but we don't need that left half anyway, okay? And then, A straight line down the middle. That is what a flat is. Just so you know how to how to create an actual real looking flat. Even though I'm on an angle, some of these flats over here are, are wonky, I admit that, but that's what I'm trying to go for. Okay? So we go to the fourth note of the scale, D flat. I don't know why I always try to do that with my finger and fail. D flat, E flat. We know that that's a whole step. Um, F. We got to do that same thing, okay? G flat. G is the next letter in the alphabet, but between F and G is a whole step. But we need a half step. So we got to bring G in. We have to flatten it. A flat, B flat. C, back to D flat. One, two, three, four, five. We got five flats, okay? Go to the fourth note of the scale. We got G flat. A flat, B flat. What's the fourth note gonna be? You guessed it, C flat. If you, if you never knew that a C flat exists, it does, okay? Because we, won't, we don't call this fourth note B natural. We're already using the letter B. We have to, we want to keep the letters consistent. It actually makes sense if you do that. It'll make more sense. D flat, E flat, F, G flat. And we have six flats. Okay? Now, I think I've got enough room on my board. We're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. Okay? So, excuse me if I like, step in, in front of the camera for a sec here. Now, I hope you can see this down here. I went, I started back to C major scale. And now we're gonna go this direction, okay? And just as a reminder, we moved in fourths when we went this direction, okay? Now, we're moving in this direction. So that those are that's almost all our flat keys, okay? But now we're going to do sharp keys. Sharp keys move in fifths. And that's where the cycle of fifths come from. Most people start off with the sharp keys. I could have started off with the sharp keys. It doesn't really matter. You could go sharps this way flats that way, it doesn't really matter, okay? 
But by doing this, the cycle of fourths and fifths that people teach um, how this works doesn't show you all the information. This teaches you exactly what is in each scale. All the notes, you can see why and where all the flats come from. And you're going to see the same thing down here where all the sharps are going to come from. Maybe let's pick red to do sharp keys. Okay. So just like we did before with the flat keys, we counted up, found out what the fourth note was. What we got to do is find out what the fifth note is. Okay. So C, D, E, F, G. G is our fifth note. So G is going to be our next key. A, B, C, D, E. And if we were to write in an F, that would be wrong, right? Because between our sixth note and our seventh note has to be a whole step. And F is in between, right? So what we have to do is widen that gap. We can't move the E. It's That's already correct. That's a whole step from D and E. So what we got to do is widen the gap by sharpening it. Capiche? Does that make sense? I hope it does. So flat means you're shifting everything over by a, a, a half step this way. Sharp means you're shifting a, a note over by a half step to the right. Now let's keep going. Fifth note of a G scale is D. That's going to be our next key. And I'm showing you not only just what the major scales are, but I'm also teaching you what the key is. Okay? Because so when someone says you're in the key of C, C, that means it has no sharps and no flats. If you're in the key of G, it means it has one sharp. And I guess I better write that in, eh? One sharp. Okay. So D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. Right? We already know that between E and F sharp is a whole step. That's why we had to get that F sharp in there. Now, if, again, if we write just write C in, that's, that's only a half step. That's not a whole step. So we have to sharpen the C. We come back to a D. And we count up how many sharps are. There's two, F sharp and C sharp. Let's keep going. Fifth note of D is A. B. C sharp. D. E. F sharp. And we know that between F sharp and G, it's a half step, so we need to create a whole step, remember, between the sixth and seventh note. So we have to stretch that over to a G sharp. And then we end up back at A. Between G sharp and A is a half step. Count up the sharps, one, two, three. Three sharps. Fifth note of E, because we have to move up a fifth. Or fifth note of A, I mean, is E, moving up a fifth. So our next key, or our next major scale, is going to be the key of E. Notice that every time I write the next key, we, we have our three sharps that were in the last key, and then we have to add in a new one. So guess what's next guess what the next one is? D sharp, yeah? Okay. No. D sharp. It has to be D sharp. And we have four sharps. So if someone says let's play something in the key of E, 
that means you have to uh, make sure to be aware that you're playing those sharps in a very general sense, mind you. Now, let's keep it going. What's the fifth note of E? B. C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp. And the seventh letter is A, but we already know between G sharp and A is a half step. We have to make that a whole step. So if you're guessing A sharp, you are correct. Back to B. Okay? And let's count them up. The last one had four sharps. This one's probably going to have five, right? One, two, three, four, five. We got it. Five sharps. Let's keep going. What's the fifth note of of F is of B is F sharp, right? So we're going to do F sharp major, G sharp, A sharp, B. A sharp to B is our half step. We know that already. C sharp. Not exactly keeping this in line, but. It's really hard when I have to reach over. So C sharp, D sharp. Now what's the last one? This might fool you some people. Might be confusing because you know the next letter has to be an E, but we know from D sharp to E is only half step. We need to create a, a whole step. So just do what we did before. Just move that E over like that. So it's going to be E sharp. back to F sharp. So just like the C flat, if you didn't know that E sharp exists, it does. It's a real thing. And we got six sharps. Now, even though we didn't meet in the middle, we so, or it doesn't look like we have met in the middle, we sort of did actually. And I'm gonna point out why, okay? It's because These two keys or scales are going to sound the same. It's like, what? What do you mean they sound the same? Well, there's a, a big word called enharmonic. Okay, enharmonic just means same thing, same sound, different name. So every single note in these two scales are enharmonically the same. F sharp is a G flat. I don't know if that, you find that confusing, but if you were to look on a piano or a guitar and you were to find where that an F sharp is, you'd realize that you could also call it a G flat, okay? Well, why do these two things exist? Well, they just do. Um, you might find a song written in the key of G flat and someone else might write something in the key of F sharp. It doesn't, they're basically gonna sound the same. Now in the classical world, they might argue that it sounds different because there's a theory that because you're playing instruments like violins, string instruments that don't have any frets, is that when you play a G flat, it is ever so psychologically when the player plays it, they make, they make it just a little bit tinier, inkling flatter than they would if it, an F sharp was written in, where it tends to be just maybe a little bit sharper. So in the classical world, they would argue that those two those two keys would the outcome would sound probably a little bit different, but on a guitar, it makes no difference. They sound exactly the same. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is continue because if we got seven notes in a scale, why can't we have seven sharps or flats, right? Well, if you're thinking that, you are correct. Okay. So, what's the I, if you're, let's see how many smart people are out there. How do we come up with a C flat scale, okay? Or an E flat, or a C sharp scale? Well, literally just 
write it out and sharpen every note. So I'm going to do these ones in blue now. C sharp is our next note in the going up anyway, right? Because we've got, the, that's the fifth note. So if we're going to continue in fifths, it works out. C sharp. Whoops. D sharp. E sharp. F sharp. G sharp. A sharp. B sharp. C sharp, and you got seven sharps. Make sense so far? Are you digging this? Is it all making starting to make sense now? We're not done yet though, because there's other things that I want to show you that's in buried inside here that you can't see yet. Okay. So let's do the opposite now. We can go C flat. We can play all. We can. Um, Take the notes of a C major scale and flatten every one of them, and you'll get seven flats. And C is our next C flat is our next key anyway, right? So I'm just essentially just writing out a C major scale and flattening every note. What you didn't know that an F flat exists? Yes, it does. It, enharmonically, remember that word enharmonic. And harm. Oops, I forgot the AR. And harmonic. Okay. It's the same thing as E natural. F flat and E natural are enharmonically the same. If I played an F flat and you played an E natural, they would sound the same. It's just in a name. G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat. We got our seven flats. Now, if this was you were here with me, I would ask you any questions. Um, hopefully, you won't have any questions by the time this is done. Um, hopefully, you'll understand everything. But give me one second. I, all this talking, talking, talking makes me dry. My, uh, my doctor said I'm allowed to drink one glass of wine per day. So I drink a bigger glass as I have. <laughs> just kidding. That's not wine. That's just... A drink that I came up with that's mostly water actually a little bit of grape juice and some lemon juice squeeze, squeezed in it's one of my favorite sort of drinks other than just drinking plain water okay what I'm gonna do now is I want to point out something to you you know how if you maybe you don't know but if you've seen someone show you the cycle of fourths and fifths before, unless someone shows you in this in the circle how to figure out what the flats and sharps are, it's 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 a little bit um, confusing. Everything to do with flat keys has to do with the number four. Flat keys move in fourths. And what note of the scale every time did the new flat appear? Did you notice? If you didn't, it was the fourth note of the scale, the new flat always appeared on the fourth note of the scale. That was where our first flat appeared. And we made it all the way to there. All the flats are right there, right in front of you. You probably didn't even realize it, but now you know that um, flats always appear on the fourth note of the scale. So when we go to the next key, which is the key of F, first flat, it always shows up on the, on, the, on the fourth note. Go to the next key, 
it's the fourth note. See what I mean? Fourth note, fourth note, fourth note. And it's the order of the flats. So if you're trying to remember the order of the flats, here you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here's a good way to remember the order of the flats. The first four flats spell bead, B-E-A-D. And then all you have to remember is G-C-F. Just even if you have to count on your fingers until you memorize it, um, just count up four, right? There you go. There's all your flats in order, listed in order. Now, sharp keys work in a similar way. They move a certain um, same amount every time. And the, sh the sharp always appears on the same note of the scale, the same degree of the scale every single time. But if you recall, sharp keys move in fifths. And the new sharp does not appear on the fifth note of the scale. Everyone always guesses that. Because this moves in fourths, so they think, OK, fourth note. And then this is in, moves in fifths, so it must be the fifth note. Well, I don't see any sharps until we get all the way up to the, to the key of B. The first sharp that ever appears is, is right there, F sharp. So the new sharp always appears on the seventh note on a, uh, in, in a sharp key. And I'm going to point out all the sharps to you, OK? Here we go. And those are even in the correct order. They just go up our list instead of going down the list like this one. OK? So since F is our first sharp, there we go. For one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. F is our first sharp. C sharp is the second sharp, right? We got, because in the key of D, we have F sharp. Then we have the new sharp, F sharp. So our new sharp always appears in the seventh note of the scale. And before I forget, I should explain that every single one of these scales, every single one of these keys, every time you move to the next key moving in fourths, Let's, let's talk about flat keys. So you're moving in fourths, remember. You keep the flat that was in that key and add in a new one. That's why it keeps increasing by one flat every time. So what was ever in the first key, that remains plus one new flat. Sharp keys work the same thing. Look, work the same way, OK? So you have, if this one has one sharp in it, the next one has two. That's F sharp and C sharp. Okay, the next one's gonna have three flat, three sharps. F sharp is the one of them. C sharp is the second one. G sharp is the new one. So in this case, it was two sharps plus a new one. The next one's gonna have uh, th those same three sharps: F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, plus the new one. And the new one's on the seventh note of the scale every single time. Is that cool? Okay. So if you're gonna practice these, I would practice them in the order that I've written in. If you're going to practice your flat keys one day, do it move in fourths. And remember the order. It's the, always the fourth note of the scale. Bead spells the first four plus G flat, C, C flat, F flat. You're moving in, in which, the next day you want to practice your sharp keys. Count up five, the fifth note in the scale, and keep adding one sharp in every time. The new sharp is always the seventh note. Now, what about minor keys? Well, if you go right here to 
the sixth note of the scale, you, you now know all your minor keys, okay? So there's a thing, there's this thing that you may or may not have heard of before called relative major and minor. Well, if you're in the key of C major, its relative minor is A minor. So if we were to write out an, an A minor scale, it would be, start with the letter A and end on the letter A. But it contains the exactly the same notes. That's why they call it relative. It's related, it's directly related. So A minor shares the same key signature. No sharps, no flats. Now you understand what the key of A minor is. And the, and the sixth note of every other key. So the relative minor of F major is D minor. Sh shares the same key signature. If you're gonna play something in D minor, you gotta be aware that that has to have a B flat in there. Just like the key of F major. So the sixth note of every one of these keys is the minor version of the major key. You just have to think of that as the first note. That is the root note. Now, I hope that this makes sense. I know my whiteboard is a little bit small and it's a little bit cramped, but hopefully you can see the logic as, because I, that's why I wanted to do it one at a time instead of write it all out and try and explain it because when you see me write it out one thing at a time, building it together, then it will hopefully make more sense. Join me back over in front of my computer, at my desk, okay? If you found this lesson fascinating, check out this video where I teach you how to figure out any chord containing four notes and how to effortlessly decode chord symbols. A lot of people really loved this lesson. Click on the video here and I'll show you the quickest and easiest way to understand chords so they're not a mystery anymore.